Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, gale force winds have caused significant damage to homes across parts of the state. Thousands were left without power, with emergency crews called out to assist in the cleanup. A backyard left in chaos. The neighbour's roof flipping off its house and onto this property behind. A casualty of howling winds ripping through Hobart overnight. Hobart's strongest gust was 109 kilometres per hour at around 4am and just uh, about that time as well, top of the mountain, the uh, strongest gust in Tasmania uh, was 148 kilometres per hour. Nine SES crews attending call-outs across the state south and northwest, including this West Hobart roof also torn off during the gale. In the event that we get wind from other directions, um, you know, such as overnight last night from the southwest in this instance, it shows vulnerabilities uh, like in regard to uh, you know, construction of properties and premises. The winds we saw in Hobart this morning and on the top of Mount Wellington, Kanani, were the uh, strongest wind gusts reported at both sites for the last two years. Thousands of residents waking up to no power this morning. Tree branches also coming down, all leading to an influx of insurance calls. We expect to be well up over the 100 claims lodged uh, for the event and for the wind damage that we saw last night. So we're expecting that to climb into hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. A blowy start to spring with some unusual winds, still typical for this time of year. Downslope winds like this are fairly uncommon. We usually get them once or twice a year and are typically in autumn and spring. It's really critical that Tasmanians do listen to the warnings and they do go to the Tasmania uh, State Emergency Service website. They do listen to the bomb warnings to prepare themselves. We know there are vulnerabilities with trees. We know that we should secure outdoor furniture. The Bureau of Meteorology predicts winds to pick up again in a cold front on Thursday. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. An Alberston man has died after crashing his car into a tree at Boat Harbour last night. The 66-year-old died of his injuries at the scene. A section of the Bass Highway was closed for several hours. Authorities believe speed was a contributing factor to the crash. A contractor has died at Nearstar. Police were called to the Hobart smelter around 10.30 this morning following a report of a medical episode. The company says investigations suggest the death is not related to plant or process related issues. It will be investigated by the coroner. A Rosetta home has been seriously damaged by fire. Just before midday, crews arrived to find the house well alight on Mary's Hope Road. Emergency services blocked the street between Calander Crescent and Gentile Court for two hours as investigations took place. The Tasmania Fire Service says the blaze was accidental, but the cause is undetermined at this stage. The damage is estimated at $600,000. A woman has described her shock after hearing the outcome of her sexual harassment allegation broadcast in Tasmania's parliament. The Premier has now committed to meeting with the government employee after issuing an apology, with an independent review now set up to look into the case. Alicia flew back to Tasmania last night after the findings of a sexual harassment allegation made against a senior colleague at Ashley Youth Detention Centre were aired publicly in parliament. She was listening at home. In with my children and heard the outcome of something that I have been waiting to hear for nearly two years. She says the shock of hearing the outcome caused her to throw up. The findings presented yesterday in a committee hearing. Off the cuff by Miss Gale that there had been no breach found in regards to my complaint. Sitting in Parliament this morning. I want to apologise for what was a misstep um, and I know that the um uh, the secretary has reached out as well and provided that apology. The human cost of that is, at this moment, not feeling very easily forgivable. Alicia says the way the outcome was revealed to her was negligent, but the outcome itself was inexplicable. Being referred to as a Japanese f doll in a room full of my senior colleagues does not constitute a breach of the state code of conduct. I cannot, for the life of me, understand what would. Peter Gutwin now committing to look into the case. There will be an independent uh, review 
conducted um, at arm's length from government of the process that occurred here. Alicia says she will request to be involved in the review in a meeting with the Premier tomorrow. She also says there needs to be drastic reform to how the state service handles allegations like hers. I am more confident that I have been in a very long time that if we unite and speak, feel the fear and do it anyway, that we can achieve broad and meaningful reform. Meg Sight, 7 Tasmania News. Well, a Longford woman accused of breaking into her 70-year-old neighbour's house and bashing him says the grisly crime was committed by another man who was wearing her clothes at the time. On the second day of her Supreme Court trial, Alicia Niall Prentice told the court four men entered her home at gunpoint to take the clothes, returning to force Prentice to withdraw cash from a nearby ATM. The court had earlier been presented with forensic evidence that Ms Prentice's clothes were stained with Mr Hayton's blood. The trial is expected to wrap up tomorrow. The first Virgin Australia flight between Adelaide and Launceston has landed, with families reuniting after months apart and tourists ready to explore the state. Border closures to other states have provided a unique opportunity for the service and the airport hopes it could lead to more flights in and out of Tasmania. Touching down less than two hours after leaving South Australia, passengers on board the first direct flight between Adelaide and Launceston in more than two decades, reuniting with family. I haven't seen them since Christmas. Well, I live in Tasmania and the great thing about this flight is connecting families. My son's from Adelaide, yeah. so it was his 21st. It was what a great present. Bring him over, put him up in business class and uh, come and have some time with Dad. Some hoping to experience the best of Tassie's produce. Lots of eating and drinking, I think. The Virgin Australia service, operating three times a week, will bring nearly 60,000 passengers into the state each year, with tourists likely to spend 10 days experiencing Tasmania's top sites. It's sure to deliver a much-needed economic boost. We know that people spend over $2,000 each when they come to Tasmania. So when you look at that sort of multiplier effect into the northern Tasmanian economy, we're going to see millions of dollars injected into the economy here in the north. COVID has uh, presented an opportunity. There's 11 million uh, international passengers that can't travel every year right now with state lockdowns. There's very limited travel opportunities. Today's inbound and outbound flights were near capacity. The airport hopes demand will take off, allowing it to introduce direct routes to other destinations across Australia. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. The future of Dark Mofo is looking brighter after the state government announced a new funding agreement for the iconic event. Seven and a half million dollars will be allocated to the festival over the next three years. It will also continue to receive marketing support from Tourism Tasmania. The annual winter celebration attracts thousands of visitors to Hobart, injecting around 20 million dollars into the economy. The state government has admitted the consultation on a fifth lane on the southern outlet could have been handled better. Infrastructure Tasmania says it's likely most homeowners set to be impacted will only lose slivers of their property. Maybe may potentially your property may be potentially impacted, um, and that was uh, that was the message to you know 17 the, the the landowners. I mean, there's no doubt that that could have been done a lot better. The infrastructure minister says it's still unclear how many homes will have to be demolished. Well, footage of the last Tasmanian tiger in captivity has been released in colour to mark National Threatened Species Day. It shows a thylacine laying in the sun having a scratch and yawning at Beaumaris Sioux in 1933. A Paris-based company restoring the footage for the National Film and Sound Archive. National Threatened Species Day aims to raise awareness of plants and other animals at risk of extinction. A Moona charity store is celebrating sustainability with a new art exhibition made from recycled and reused goods. City Mission Op Shops approaching Tasmanian artists to create stylish looks from old materials and a mini lounge room using pre-owned furniture and building supplies. The Ottomans are made from old crates. They've got legs on them from beds and then the tops were cushions off an old couch. Yeah, so totally recycled materials. Envisage using waste, so um, extending the life of an item, piece of clothing, um, 
some products that the clothing are made of, um, looking at other ways to use them purposely before sending them to landfill. The Reuse, Rewear, Rebuy exhibition will be on display until Saturday. And Brad Cox Goodger has won the 2021 Alistair Lynch medal, the second time he's taken out the TSL's top gong. North Launceston riding high ahead of Sunday's grand final, but another battle is brewing over a controversial suspension handed out. It's the TSL's highest honour. By winning his second Alastair Lynch medal, Brad Cox Goodyear cements his status as one of the competition's greats. The Bombers playing coach amassing 23 votes to win the count by four. It's a nice achievement uh, to, to win this award. It's obviously there's been some great players that have won it before. Guiding his baby Bombers to a grand final berth in his first year as senior coach. The extra work doesn't appear to have affected his game at all. Yeah, it was something that I was... Uh, it was a bit of an unknown, not knowing how I was going to perform. Despite the honour, Cox Goodyear says his gaze is on this weekend. I'm fully focused on the, on the grand final on Sunday, so it's something I'll look back on in hindsight. Incredibly, the count in the Development League's Rodney Eid medal ended in a three-way tie. Glenorchy's Josh Whitford was on fire in the first half of the season, polling 14 votes in 12 rounds. My focus going into pre-season was just to get stronger and continue to get fitter and just progress overall with every aspect of footy, really. The run of form seeing him promoted to the seniors. Leading by three votes with a game to go, both Launceston's Tom McShane and North Launceston's Jack Mazengarb polled the maximum to catch him. A lot of training and a lot of hard work that goes into it. Um, it's a very good program we have at Launceston and, and um, we're challenged but we're also supported a lot. Me being one of the older players in the team, I've kind of worked on being a bit more of a leader on the field and I help. I think that's helped me develop as a player. Today a potentially match turning decision made for the grand final. Launceston's Cody Thorpe slapped with a two game ban by the match review officer for this late hit during last weekend's prelim. Thorpe has challenged the ruling. He'll face the tribunal tomorrow night. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. To cricket and speeds to Nathan Ellis has extended his contract with the Hobart Hurricanes until 2023. Last season, Ellis took 20 wickets and an average of 22.3, the career best season, propelling him towards an international debut. We've got a, a good core group who's played a fair bit of cricket together now and um, just really motivated to, to try and get that first win. And he's had a a meteoric rise over the last number of years um, and it's been good to lock Nathan away until 2023. Club says it's looking to lock in the side's Tasmanian spine over coming weeks while also hoping they'll soon have an overseas player to announce. The Jack Jumpers have welcomed their latest recruit to be released from hotel quarantine. Jared Weeks, the man dubbed Agent 97, is no stranger to Hobart, having spent time with the Chargers five years ago. And while quarantine is providing some challenges for his new team, the point guard and new dad admits it's had some benefits. We try and stay fit as best you can inside, a, inside of those four walls, but um, yeah, family came out on top and you know we used his good time with the young fella. We have to be very patient and, and um, slow with these guys coming out of quarantine. You sit there for 14 days uh, and not do much as an athlete. It's very difficult to just get back on the floor, so we're very cautious about integrating them very slowly. Weeks will don the number 97 when the season gets underway in November. Good evening. A bit of wild weather around the state today. It was 17 in Launceston, 15 for Burnie and Devonport and a top of 14 for Hobart. St Helen was the state's top at 19 degrees, Friendly Beaches reached 16, 14 for King Island, Flinders Island, Lowhead and Ooze, Strawn had a high of 13 and 7 in Liawini. Some cumulus cloud extended over the western and southern districts of Tasmania with clear skies about the central north and northeast. For the rest of Australia, a frontal cloud band lies to the southwest of Western Australia and extends into the Southern Ocean. And some cumulus cloud over the southeast of South Australia, Southern Victoria and Northern Queensland. Tomorrow the high has drifted eastward while the front has moved closer to southwest WA and the trough remains over Northern Queensland. And the strong winds continue with westerly winds tending northwesterly at up to 40 knots about the west and south during the morning and swells reaching up to 4 to 6 metres there as well. 
A gale warning is current for northeastern coastal waters from the northern tip of Flinders Island to Wineglass Bay for west northwesterly winds. And another gale warning for southern coastal waters from Tasman Island to Rock Low Rocky Point for northwesterly winds. A strong wind warning is current for all remaining coastal waters in the Central Plateau and the Southwest Lakes. To tomorrow's forecast, partly cloudy and 17 for Hobart and Jeeveston and 15 degrees for Bothwell. Launceston and Cressy a top of 17, similar conditions for Devonport. A shower or two in Strawn and 16 in Cloudy for Burnie and Curry, And partly cloudy in St Helens and Orford, mostly sunny in Swansea. To the three-day forecast, Thursday we'll see showers statewide, a mainly fine day on Friday with a bit of rain about the west and far south and a wet start to the weekend with showers across the state. Looking Australia-wide, 20 and mostly sunny in Melbourne tomorrow, Sydney a sunny 22 degrees and mostly sunny for Brisbane. And it's currently 9 degrees in Hobart and partly cloudy, 11 in clear in Launceston and mostly clear for Devonport and 10 degrees there. That's all for tonight. Back to you, Kim. And that is all we have time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night.